In this video, we will be solving this question which says Mary Granola loves to consume two goods, grapefruits and avocados and we are asked does Mary have convex preferences. Now before discussing the solution, let's first understand what do you mean by convex preferences. By definition, the preferences are convex if whenever the consumer is indifferent between the consumption bundle x1, x2 and y1, y2, then the weighted average bundle or the combination bundle which is is calculated as Tx1 plus 1 minus Ty1 comma Tx2 plus 1 minus Ty2 is weakly preferred to the consumption bundle x1 comma x2. For any t such that t is between 0 and 1 where 0 and 1 are both included. In simple terms convexity says that the consumer prefers averages to the extremes. So if the consumer is indifferent between x and y then she prefers the weighted average bundle tx plus 1 minus ty to either x or why? Now, I know that this definition might seem a bit complex to you at first and you might not know how to apply this definition to a particular set of preferences. So let me break it into three steps which you can easily apply and see if your preferences are convex or not. Your first step corresponds to this segment of the definition which is this which says choose any two consumption bundle such that the consumer is indifferent between them. Second step corresponds to this weighted average bundle where you have to find the combination bundle or the weighted average bundle for different values of t where t is between 0 and 1 and 0 and 1 are included. And the final step corresponds to this sign which is a weak preference which says if the weighted average bundle is weakly preferred to the extreme bundles then for all values of t then the preferences are convex. So let's apply these steps one by one to a given preferences. In the previous video, we drew these two indifference curves for Mary, where both the indifference curves depict the same set of preferences, but they are drawn for different set of consumption bundles. Here, the blue indifference curve corresponds to the consumption bundle 10, 10, where she is consuming 10 avocados and 10 grapefruits, and the red indifference curve corresponds to the consumption bundle 20, 20, where she is consuming 20 avocados and 20 grapefruits, but still the preferences depicted by both the indifference curve remains the same. So if we are able to figure out the convexity of one indifference curve, the same thing will apply to another indifference curve as well. Hence I would be only working with the blue indifference curve and the same thing would apply to the red indifference curve as well. So let's begin. The first step of the indifference curve says choose any two consumption bundles such that the consumer is indifferent between them. So thus for the consumer to be indifferent between any two consumption bundles, those two consumption consumption bundle have to be on the indifference curve. So let me choose these two consumption bundles. You could have chosen any two consumption bundle of your choice. I am just choosing these two consumption bundles specifically so that you are able to understand the concept of convex preferences easily. So my first consumption bundle is zero, this where she is consuming zero avocados and 30 grapefruits. That means she is only consuming grapefruits at this con that means she is only consuming grapefruits at this consumption bundle. Whereas at this consumption bundle, she is consuming 30 avocados and 0 grapefruits which means at this consumption bundle she is consuming only avocados. Now since both of these consumption bundles are lying on the indifference curve, hence Mary would be indifferent between them. So we are done with the first step. Now what if Mary thinks that instead of eating only grapefruits or instead of eating only avocados, what if I eat the combination of the two? That means I have some grapefruits and some avocados avocados. That means she is trying to figure out the combination bundle or the weighted average bundle. Now what if she gives equal weightage to both grapefruits and avocados and if that is the case that means your T would be half as she is giving equal weightage to both the consumption bundles. That means she wants to have equal amounts of avocados and grapefruit which would be somewhere in the middle of these two consumption bundles. That would be she wants to have half grapefruits and half avocados that would be a point here which would be of the form 15 comma 15. Now somehow she feels that she likes more grapefruits than avocados. That means now she is giving a higher weightage to grapefruits than avocados. Thus she would 
like to have more grapefruits than avocados and land up at this point where she is having 20 grapefruits and 10 avocados now she is giving a higher weightage to this consumption bundle that's why the consumption bundle 20 comma 10 is closer to this consumption bundle than consumption bundle 30 comma 0 now she reads an article on the internet and finds out that avocados are healthier than grapefruits thus she wants to change the consumption and now likes to have more avocados than grapefruits now she is giving a higher weightage to this consumption bundle than this consumption bundle and thus the new consumption bundle would be closer to the consumption bundle 30 comma 0 as she is giving higher weightage to this she would land up somewhere here or here it would depend how much weightage is she giving to the consumption bundle 30 comma 0 now note that this weightage depends on the value of t which is between 0 and 1 where 0 and 1 are both included now suppose if she is considering the weightage of t as 0 which means she is giving 0 weightage weightage to our first consumption bundle this and giving the entire weightage to this consumption bundle then the new weighted average bundle would be nothing but your co consumption bundle 30 comma 0 and if she is giving the entire weightage to the consumption bundle of 0 comma 30 then your new weighted average bundle or the combination bundle would be 0 comma 30 and since t is between 0 and 1 it is a real number that means your t can take infinite values which means you would be able to have infinite weighted average bundle or the combination bundle which would look like this which would be infinite in number i am drawing just few so that you're able to visualize but they would be infinite and those infinite combination bundles would eventually trace out to a straight line which looks like this red line so this red line depicts all your weighted average bundles for different values of t and as you can see that this is nothing but the equation of your straight line so we have figured out all the combination bundle and the weighted average bundle which is nothing but your straight line so let's see what your third step says the third step says that if the weighted average bundle is weakly preferred to extreme bundles for all values of t then the preferences are convex now focus on the condition for all values of t since t is a real number that means it would be having infinite values and it is really impossible for us to check for infinite values of t that is for infinite weighted average bundles so if that weighted average bundle is making the consumer better off or not so for that what we do is we just check for the entire line at once and see if that entire line is making the consumer better off or not so if i choose this consumption bundle randomly and i'm able to draw the indifference curve which would look like something like this so this line would be parallel to this line and this line would be parallel to this line though my drawing is not as such but you get the idea and since this indifference curve is lying to the right and above of this indifference curve that means by monotonicity mary is getting a higher level of satisfaction at the new indifference curve which means she would be preferring the new indifference curve to the older one but now what about these two extreme points where your consumption bundle are coinciding with the old indifference curve note that the definition of weak preference include strict preference or indifference here the consumer would be indifferent between the weighted average bundle and the extreme bundles which are consumption bundle x and y so in this scenario also we would say that she weakly prefers the weighted average bundle to the extreme bundles thus the weighted average bundles are weakly preferred to extreme bundles for all values of t thus we can safely say that the preferences are convex you can also check the convexity using any other two consumption bundles suppose we choose these two consumption bundles and again we are able to draw the straight line which is nothing but your weighted average bundles we see that the weighted average bundles are lying to the right and above of the indifference curve thus they are making consumer least better off as the consumer would be indifferent at these two consumption bundles
Now, what if I choose these two consumption bundle? Here, my all the weighted average bundles are coinciding with the indifference curve. But as I told you before, that definition of weak preference includes indifference or strict preference. So here, all the weighted average bundles are making are keeping the consumer at least at the same level of satisfaction. Thus, she will still weakly prefer the weighted average bundles, the extreme bundles. Hence again, your preferences are convex. So it does not matter which two consumption bundles you're taking till the point that they are making the consumer at least better off. So you could have taken these two consumption bundle or these two consumption bundles or the one I did in the previous case, which were these two consumption bundles. Now you might be thinking that the weighted average bundles would always like lie on the right and above of the indifference curve making the consumer at least better off and hence your preferences will always be convex but that is not the case as consider these two preferences in this preference if i take these two consumption bundle and since they're lying on the indifference curve thus the consumer would be indifferent between them and this dashed line represents the weighted average bundle also the arrows represents the direct preference direction so if i choose randomly any weighted average bundle so suppose i choose the consumption bundle z and i draw the indifference curve passing through this consumption bundle i will see that the new indifference curve is lying below the original indifference curve thus it is reducing the level of satisfaction for the consumer instead of at least keeping it at the same level. Thus here the preferences are not convex. But you might be thinking that if I take this consumption bundle and I draw the indifference curve which would look like this, then it is making consumer better off. But your definition said that the weak preference should hold true for all values of t and not just some values of t it holds true for these values of t and these values of t but not for these values of t hence the preferences are not convex in this case as it does not hold true for all values of t now consider this scenario where your preference direction are depicted by arrows and you have to check the convexity of this indifference curve. So suppose you choose these two consumption bundles x1, x2 and y1, y2 and since they are lying on the same indifference curve the consumer would be indifferent between them. Now this dashed line depicts the weighted average bundle and if I randomly choose this consumption bundle z which is your weighted average bundle and see if it is making consumer better off or not and I draw the indifference curve passing through this consumption consumption bundle i see that this indifference curve is lying below the original indifference curve hence it is making consumer worse off thus again the preferences are not convex in this particular case now note that this holds true for all values for all the weighted average bundles thus again here your preferences are not convex so it is not always the case that the weighted average bundle would make the consumer better off it could be the case that there are some values of t which are making the consumer better off and there are some which are making the consumer worse off or there or there all the values are making the consumer worse off so be very careful that the entire line or your weighted average bundle should be making the consumer better off in order to have the preferences to be convex